1881 Colombo Salon. Things were different then. Life more leisurely. Roads less crowded. It was also a time when tea came into the forefront of our economy. The hill country was being opened up. Railways were crisscrossing the hillsides, carrying tea for shipment abroad. It was also the time when a branch of the National Bank of India was opened in Colombo. This branch was opened at Bailey Street and moved almost immediately to York Street, where through a hundred years, the National Bank of India in Colombo served the economy of this country and went through transformations which saw the emergence of Grinley's Bank Limited in Colombo. Nearly 100 years later, in 1980, Grinley's was a colossus in Sri Lanka's banking sphere and an intrinsic part of its financial world. Then, as it neared the completion of 100 years, disaster struck. Disaster struck on the night of the 3rd of October, 1980. A fire sparked off on the first floor of the building, spread to the entire building by late that night. As the fire department of the city of Colombo battled to contain the flames, the monster roared and engulfed the massive structure. Flames licked around the beams, the windows, the girders, crackling and devouring everything in sight, lighting up the night sky with its awesome power. The remains, still smoldering two days later, were just the empty shell of a building that once dominated the corner of York Street in Fort. Synonymous though the building was with the House of Greenleys, the bank could not be touched by the flames' might. Work started overnight, work of reconstructing, rehabilitating and redecorating in the premises of the home of the general manager 
to convert it into temporary quarters from where the bank could operate its comeback. on Saturday night when I was having a cocktail party here for some of our customers and I was phoned by uh, a chap from the YMCA who had been contacted by our watcher and asked to come down because there was a small so he thought fire in the building I went down there and by the time I got down there at about half past eight the ground and first floors of the building were totally full of smoke it was impossible to enter either the ground or first floors. The fire brigade had been called and the police turned up. Uh, after that, uh, the fire brigade attempted to put out what was obviously smoldering, but after an hour or two, flames started to appear. And after that, well, the result is what you can see. It's an old building, there's an awful lot of wood in it, and we knew that when a fire started, or if a fire started, it was going to be very difficult, if not impossible, to stop it. The amount of the damage to the building and contents is obviously absolute. There's nothing left of above ground level. The damage below ground level, we have every reason to believe, is minimal. It's where our vaults are, it's where our safety deposit boxes are, and the information we've received from both the fire brigade and the police is that these areas are totally untouched by the fire. They're protected by a minimum of 15 inches of reinforced concrete, and they're designed to take very tough treatment. Just as soon as we can get into the bank and into the vaults, we'll be able to confirm whether the fire brigades and the police's suspicions are correct. But we, we think they're all right. Well, it's difficult to estimate the total loss because some of the items, it's difficult to put a monetary value on. As you appreciate, any bank uh, which has been in existence in, uh, for as long as we have in Sri Lanka, we've been here nearly 100 years, a lot of our experience is based on the accumulated knowledge. And while you can't put a monetary value on that, it's, uh, it's very important to us. The total insured value of the building plus contents is of the order of 45 million rupees. We've, had, we've already had discussions with the chairman of the insurance corporation who has said that he, he is going to give us an advance payment of a minimum of 10 million rupees. The insurance corporation have accepted that it's a total loss and that the insured value is what will be paid. We're, we're, incidentally, we're very impressed with the way in which the Insurance Corporation have been handling this. It's been very constructive, they've been very helpful, and they've, been re they've responded very quickly indeed. Uh, they'll have been affected to the extent that there will be some missing documents. But as Mr. Nichols often says, uh, all bank transactions have a counterparty, and all those people can come to us with the counterparty documentation, and it's just a question of our duplicating the information. I think, I think what we've learned so far from all this is that our routine instructions that exist within the bank seem to work. 
And one of our routine instructions is that every day we shift a lot of the records, the duplicates of the records that record that day's transactions elsewhere. Now, sometimes that's not done on a daily basis. It depends which record you're talking about. Sometimes it's only at fortnightly intervals. But it means that Mr. Nichols has been able, or will have been able in a few, t a few days, to rebuild the records on the assumption that we can get out of that building nothing at all, which is purely a business assumption, because we'll get our basement vault will be all right. But if we assume we get nothing at all from our records point of view, we can manage and we can be back in business next week. And that is the assumption he's made just in case. Now, if and when we do get those records out, it's a nice bonus. So I think, I think we're quite pleased that the system seems to work. Well, I guess that all the, all the members of staff who have not had the best performance appraisals on their files will be delighted. <laughs> but. Uh, uh, at, <laughs> at, at the moment, I think that, that's not one of our major concerns. Our major concern is to get the bank operational as quickly as possible. Equally, of course, there's, uh, and I'm sorry to disappoint those people who might be affected, there is some reason to believe that those, some of those records might have survived because, again, because personnel records are confidential and important. We saw those in fireproof filing cabinets, not fireproof safes, but fireproof filing cabinets. And while uh, they may have suffered a certain amount of damage because our personnel department was on the top floor of the bank and all the records will now be on the bottom floor of the bank. Uh, with luck, they, we may s find something survived. But again, personnel records can be reconstructed. Most of our employees have got their letters of, letters of appointment, so we know when they started. We can rebuild the details of their uh, salary payments, details of their provident fund. Again, that'll take a little bit of time, and it's not our top priority at the moment. Our top priority is to get back in business, giving our customers uh, a normal banking service. Well, to plan out the new building, we've already got our premises uh, expert down here. here. His initial job will be in charge of salva salvaging what's on the site and making sure the site is cleared as quickly as possible. We have every intention of maximizing the development po potential of that site. Uh, it is entirely possible that we could have a new building, uh, we could be operating from a new building on that site by April 1982. One of our objectives is that by January the 2nd next year, we will be able to, uh, by January the 2nd at the latest, we'll be able to show to members of the press artist's impressions of what our new building will, will look like. Now, January the 2nd is a funny date, but the reason why we chose January the 2nd, or we've set ourselves that deadline, is because on that date, Grindley's Bank will have been in Sri Lanka for a hundred years. You will all be invited, and Mr. Nichols has asked us if we would not use fireworks at that party. So we <laughs> there were residential quarters, but there, they weren't being occupied at, at that time. The last occupant of the bank, of the flats above the bank, had left uh, within the last few months. Uh, there was uh, one of the, the mess boys was sleeping upstairs at the time, but we managed to get him out, so that was all right. If the response of our customers so far is anything to go by, then I would suspect that the effect on our business will be minimal. Our customers have been marvelous. We've had limitless offers of help and assistance, and the generosity and the understanding of our customers so far has been incredible and especially in the intensive competitive environment in banking we've got today. But I, I hope and think that the pace with which we'll bounce back should, and I'm sure it will, impress our customers. Yeah, I think, I mean, I go along with that. I think this, is, this can be seen as an opportunity for uh, Mr. Nichols' team to show its mettle. And our customers so far have been highly responsive. If we really can be back in business, having suffered a total loss, over last weekend, and we're back in business within 10 days, I think all of us here would, would reckon that was pretty good going. If we can do that, that gives some indication, I think, of the quality of our Sri Lankan team. And we're getting a very, very public chance to show the rest of Sri Lanka just how good it is. So in many ways, uh, we may find, I don't suggest that we did it on purpose, we may find that this is an opportunity to improve our business rather than the reverse. I think all you have to do when we've finished here is just go and see 
the amount of work we're putting in already in this building and the, willing, the willingness with which the people here are working. They're working on three shifts, well. round the clock. <laughs> uh, and the response of the staff has been excellent. Citibank's ownership of Grindler's of 49% does not mean that we don't compete in any centre. It is an investment of theirs, and while we are all very good friends, and we use each other's training facilities, our policies are entirely separate, our strategies are entirely separate, and we are totally competitive. And it's very refreshing for us to find, we are relative to Citibank, a fairly small bank. It is therefore very refreshing to find in Sri Lanka that we can do them favors, because in Sri Lanka, relatively, they are a minute bank compared to us. But our, uh, as I say, we are friendly, but we are totally competitive. They're separate organizations run separately with separate boards, separate executives, no, no strategies in common at all. By which time we will have reconstructed our accounts. We have the facilities to do this, because as part of our normal, Grindley's normal internal procedures, we store our accounting records in a separate location. It's just a question of bringing these up to date. In a matter of just seven days, the same Greenlay's enthusiasm, efficiency and hard work enabled a flame of another kind to be lit, a symbolic flame of the traditional lamp marking the opening of temporary quarters. Mr. Nichols, the bank was back at work with gentlemen. normalized banking services at the Cargill's building in Fort. It's a pleasure for, for me today to be present at this reopening or resumption of normal banking services by the Greenless Bank on that this day. As we all know, Greenless Bank has a rebirth. It has been resurrected and reconstructed from the ashes. And the credit to this mammoth effort goes not only to Mr. Nichols, who has worked day and night has converted his own house into an office space, but also to the staff who had done human service throughout this period, and to the customers and the people who had shown confidence and maturity in giving all the necessary assistance in an emergency situation. Actually, the success of any bank depends on these three factors. The staff, the customers, the people, and the executives. And to this, I must say we must all thank everyone, not only the staff of the Greenless Bank, but also the members of other banks for assisting the Greenless Bank at this, at this juncture, because they were able to uh, hold Greenless Bank's checks, honor the checks issued on Greenless Bank, as Greenless Bank was not in the position to come for clearing during this particular period. Now from today, everything will be normal, but though in three different places. The confidence shown by the public is most commendable. And I must say that it was not, it was not only due to their own faith and confidence in the bank, but also the customer services and the efficiency it had shown throughout its career, throughout its, uh, throughout its period, over the last 100 years, that this has been built up in order to have the best personal and public relationships with the customers. The central bank, for its part, will give whatever assistance Grindel's bank may ask. And so far, they have not asked for much assistance because they have been confident. And they have been quite been able to reconstruct its activities in a matter of few days. You could see for yourself that this particular branch has been arranged and organized within a matter of less than one, seven days. The central bank will stand committed to 
assist Gindas Bank whenever they want any assistance in its activities in the future. I wish its all success in its new, practically a new venture. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Dr. Rajaputram, thank you very much. It, I have the very pleasant duty of saying thank you. Uh, it's sometimes when you say thank yous, you don't remember to say thank you to everybody. So I hope the people I forget will forgive me. First of all, thank you, sir, for all the nice things you've said, for the support you have given us, and for coming along this morning to declare the branch open. Thank you to the business community who have helped us. There are a few names that I'd like to single out for sp special mention of those people who have helped us in the last 10 days. First of all, obviously, there's Cyril Gardner, without whom we wouldn't have this gorgeous new branch. Thank you very much, Cyril. Secondly, there's Cornell Pereira, who isn't in the country at the moment, who has given us, uh, well, made available to us the branch in Darley Road. Thirdly, there's David Blackler of John Keels, who, before the fire had stopped burning, had made available space to us in his warehouse for all our pledged goods. Then there's the people from Spie Batignol, the French construction company, John Cassidy, Yap de Jong, and Michel Bruno, who have worked incredible hours taking our stuff out of that vault and out of the building in very dangerous conditions. Only three minutes after one of the last items came out, one of the walls fell down. They've worked wonders. Again, all the suppliers of equipment uh, have rallied round. Some of them, Metropolitan Agencies, Fenton's, Finko's, Finko's especially. We've got two reasons to thank Finko's. One, for selling us safes which were actually fireproof. And two, for supplying us with new safes in such a short period of time. And thirdly, I suppose, for opening the safes for us, which we couldn't do. Then there are the people who have got this building ready. There's UN Gunasekra, Don Carolis, Surat Wickramasinghe, many others, far too numerous to mention. But these are the tangible, the visible effects of us coming back to life. The less visible effects or less visible effort has been on the part of our staff. None of this would have been possible without the amount of work that all 400 Grindley's employees have put in over the last 10 days. The response to this tragedy has been remarkable on the part of the staff. I know that with their support, we can build an even better bank. As I said to them last Monday at the staff briefing, the day after, two days after the fire, we might have lost a few bricks and mortar, but we've still got the bank because the bank are the people in it. And that's true even more today than it was then. We hope that on January the 2nd next year, when we celebrate our centenary, we'll have a big party without fireworks, but a big party nonetheless. And I hope that we'll see a lot of you there. A hundred years of banking in Sri Lanka, we're very proud to have been involved with Sri Lanka for a hundred years, and we have every intention of being involved for at least another hundred years. By that time, we'll have a clear idea as to what sort of building we're going to put on the site and what sort of services we're going to offer. Keep watching the television and the press. We'll keep you informed about what we're going to do. Lastly, uh, Cyril Gardner said to me the, the other day that he'd thought of a new slogan for Grindley's Bank. You know, it's, our logo is this elephant standing up. And he thought a new slogan might be, Grindley's rises to the occasion. Well, all the staff have risen to the occasion. And the other thing about elephants is that they never forget. And we'll never forget. Thank you. Valued clients made their first cash deposits to signal the resumption of normal banking work.
Kiribati to celebrate, and it's back to work. The flames that gutted the Greenlays' home on that night only served to fire the staff and others of the bank to heights of efforts unimaginable. Customers flock back to the tradition that Greenlays has built up over the years. A tradition of courtesy, friendliness, security and efficiency. A tradition that not even the greatest fire could have destroyed. This is the reputation and the sound tradition that has made Greenlays the trusted banking name it is today. Standards that will be the norm for all their banking services in Sri Lanka for years to come. As the general manager, Mr. Roger Nichols, very appropriately stated, the elephant never forgets and Greenlays will never forget. The foundation stone for the new Greenlays Bank head office was laid on the 12th of January by the Honorable Minister of Finance, Mr. Ronnie DeMell. The six-story building is due for completion in mid-1983. The 90,000 square feet building will be fully air-conditioned and equipped with the most modern security and fire prevention equipment. Greenlays Bank has been in operation in Sri Lanka for just over a hundred years. By 4th October 1983, that is three years after the disastrous fire, Grinley's new office was completed. The building comprises a basement with car parking facilities, a ground floor and five upper floors. It also has central air conditioning and automatic lifts to all floors. In addition, the building will have full standby power generation. The fit-out and main internal finishes were done by a local company, Parquet Ceylon Limited. The multi-story building has been designed by Bernard Sunley of England. Sirat Wickramasing Associates are the local design and project consultants. Thank you. 
The new building of Grinley's Bank was ceremonially declared open by the Minister of Finance and Planning, Ronnie DeMille. Mr. A.J. O. Ritchie, Chief Executive and Deputy Chairman, was also present at the ceremony. Speaking to the distinguished audience is the General Manager, Mr. Smith. Central Bank. Today, with the ceremonial opening of the new building of the Middlesex Bank, it is both a sense of satisfaction and a cause for celebration that the Middlesex Bank was able to come up out of the ashes of 1980. And I like Mr. A. J. O. Ritchie. Minister of Finance and Planning, Ronnie DeMel. For many reasons. Although it is not the prerogative of those who lay foundation stones to be associated with openings, still it is a pleasure to be associated with the opening when one has laid the foundation stone. Secondly, I think you will permit me to strike a personal note. If I say that I have some right to be associated with this opening ceremony because I had my first bank account in Windows Bank in the late 1940s. 
It was an account which was handed down to me by my father. And it had been handed down to him by his father. So I think my grandfather must have been one of the first constituents of Green Bay's bank. Thirdly, Green Bay's bank has played a significant role in the economic development of this land. It has done so for 102 years. I hope it will not only go to its second century, but it will break the record. It has helped in the development of the plantations. It has helped in the expansion of trade. It is now helping us in the development of the open market economy, in industry, in trade, in shipping, in tourism, and in agriculture. So I think Green Lake's Bank continues to play a significant role in Sri Lanka, as well as in the 40 other countries in the world in which the bank has branches. The Honorable Minister cuts the ribbon to declare the bank open. ceremony included the lighting of the traditional oil lamp by the distinguished visitors who had gathered for the occasion. of the senior executive staff of Brindley's were also present at the opening ceremony. 
There was Mr. Chowdhury, operations manager, Mr. Joe De Silva, manager personnel, banking division, Mr. Ananda Atakorele, manager, international banking division, manager, commercial banking division, Mr. Anton Rotniker, the general manager, Mr. David Smith, and the personnel manager, Mr. Morris Cassells. surrounded by a feeling of five-star luxury, sleek, elegant decor, whisper-soft atmosphere. But what's even more important is the five-star treatment you'll get. Superb. So whether it's business or personal banking, come to Greenlayers, the five-